and then we throw this wild shot does lots of damage the question does it if it doesn't ko we have to throw another move it does ko and now <laughs> here comes the wiggles the wiggles will not like to see will not like wouldn't like to see this wild shot this wild shot will take out the wiggles magnezone is going on a rampage taking out three pokemons well played mr pocket wow literally three pokemons Hello and welcome, we're going to get into another video. On today's video, we have some phenomenal gameplay from Hot Pocket, the regional champion, the, the, the one and the only true PvP legend, legend, one of the best players ever since PvP has came out, even before PvP has came out, when he, when during like the grassroots, before PvP. Uh, let me just like do a brief, uh, his, like uh, introduction about Pocket and how many regionals he has won so far. So let's go and check a drag. So if we go to the player leaderboard and you click the global leaderboard for last year and you can see Doombug, Polasha and Pocket. So yeah, last year he was top 3 on the entire world from the competitive meta uh, like uh, MMR. Uh, let's just click on his profile and see. Look at this. N number 9 in this tournament in, L in Lucifer. 13 in Baltimore. 5 at Pokemon Go World Championship. Number one in Nyak. Nyak is, you could say Nyak is as good as Pokemon Go World Championship. Number nine, number three, 17, nine, five, 33. I, it, the list keeps going on. Look at this. Number three, number nine, number three in, in Pittsburgh. Uh, last one, number seven. So Pocket is a massive hero in, the, in, in this game. And he's like 17 years old. I think he's been playing the game since he was 12. And when he was 12, he was like one of the consistent page one leaderboard battlers and today's video we will show a team that he sent to me i actually he did not send it to me i actually asked him because he used this team to hit 34 uh 3430 30, something like that's that number five on the leaderboard and his team was incredibly unique he is using a triple shadow and the team is basically shadow drift blim shadow magnezone and shadow drapeon yes it can we use none shadows no it has to be all shadows all of these pokemon are good because they have tremendous amount of fast move pressure or charge move pressure because of the shadow bonus damage that's added to their damage so pocket is was nice enough to send us uh i think two hours of battles so i chose uh, around 11 to 12 battles so let's just go and watch them and from there we will be able to judge and see what is the unique thing about his games game style so game number one we have Drifloom into altaria this is not a bad matchup the problem is that dragon breath adds pretty fast but you know what also adds pretty fast astonish it's the best fast move currently they shielded the icy one so now we are cooking uh, in this matchup there is a uh, there is a Gastro, but he changed the Gastro to the Magnezone later. I think his team was always the one you see on the screen right here. But for, for two, three battles, he played Polyrath and uh, and Gastro. This is not his team. This is... Oh, this is Washing Machine. Yeah, Washing Machine is stupid team. Yeah, uh, we don't blame him, guys. This is Washing Machine team. And Washing Machine team wa Washing Machine was using those three. Because they were literally the only three that he has. Because he quit the game for like six seasons. By... 12 seasons uh so now it's a gastromir uh the gastro is dead what do we do we just go to go to polyrath and try to catch to sneak a a, a high elo high iq gameplay is like okay let me do one thing catch they still throw the body slam they bring it back the altaria they are in ball in power up punch range and they are about to get to a move so that's why mr pocket just threw the power up punch now it's going to be up to see the third so opponent still doesn't know what to do which give us like good vibes and there is the done spot so what do we do here polyrath is just going crazy yeah polyrath dude that power punch did so much damage and all you need to do is farm shield and farm all the way down and then throw the move on the gas row uh, but no the gas row was trying to catch a power punch and then they lost the game that was a good game uh, by the way pocket started streaming so i'll be leaving his stream in the description below make sure to give him a follow he doesn't stream consistently but he's trying to stream four days a week that's consistent enough for us azu how does he play the azu i think the best play to azu is you shield, you bait, you catch the second ice beam. The problem is that people who are using Azu at high MMR, they are expecting the catch, so they will always over farm. Let's see, is he going to do it? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Opponent actually paused for the turn to prevent the catch. Uh, pocket is still no shielding, and there is the Drifloom in the back. And this team is just insanely weak to Drifloom. And I think that's the reason he stopped using this team, because... At Washing Machine's ELO, people don't use Drifloom. At Pocket's ELO, people are using Drifloom, so you can't be weak to that. And that's why he's using Magnezone. Uh, Magnezone to beat the opposing Drifloom in the back. 
because his drift limb will always be against the mud boys. Look at this. Uh, this is a scuffed matchup as we need to shield the stone edge and no shield the aqua tail. Uh, we did one, we do one then throw. Uh, good timing as always, just like Mr. Pocket here. They shielded the icy wind, which tells us that there is no way they bait here, right? He's gonna let it go because they are debuffed and it no longer KOs. And oh my, dude, what a call. What a call. That was a nice call. Does he shield here? I think he still lived this, right? And he's, he instantly went to uh, Drapion, and we're gonna see him throwing on ideal timing because he's pocket. He never, he never throw on bad timing like us guys. Uh, they still the move. <sighs> this is a bit iffy because we have to no shield an icy wind. Oh my dude, he calls it. Not like because he has, he wants to. It's all more like because he can't. He can't shield. But that was a massive. That that was a great call to be honest. Uh, one then throw. And now we win this switch, and now it's depend. It depends on the third. What do they have? They have a jump up. Jump up does not beat Magnezone, and that was a good game. Next game, horrible lead. We go to Drapion. Bond brings in Diggersby, and we over farm for a bit. Then we start throwing these Aqua Tails. Uh, the problem in this matchup is that one Scorching Sign will take us out, but if we you know shield the Fire Punch, we win this matchup in the zero, I think, and in the one. Do we shield though? That's a tough question. We shield. It's Fire Punch. But that doesn't mean it's a GG yet, right? Uh, Pocket is trying to CMP the Diggersby. Diggersby did not throw, which tells us that they are just going to simply shield. Uh, do we shield this one? That's the big question. The answer is no. And that was another call. So that was a great call by Pocket. He's like, I need him to bait to win this matchup. And they baited. And that was a CMP. And now it's going to be a tough game for the opponent. Wait, opponent is going straight for the punch. I think they have Hyper Bleen. Uh, they have a done spots in the back, so we simply just shield this, and we have to do two, then throw. Let's see. One, two, and then we throw. This wild shot does lots of damage. The question, does it, if it doesn't KO, we have to throw another move. It does KO, and now <laughs> here comes the Wiggles. The Wiggles will not like to see, will not like, wouldn't like to see this wild shot. This wild shot will take out the Wiggles. Magnezone is going on a rampage, taking out three Pokemons. Well played, Mr. Pocket. Wow. Literally three Pokemons. That's like... The power of counting. He knows how to count to seven, guys. Unlike us. We always count to three, then throw. Uh, Alpon swaps in a Diggersby. Diggersby is, again, is an annoying Pokemon to handle for this team. Uh, but if they swap in Diggersby, you just simply stay in. Uh, we landed the Icy Wind. Now, what do they have? Like, that's a neutral. It's just Fire Punch, right? Uh, we... Uh, let's see. Uh, they threw the Fire Punch, I think. We do two then throw. Yes, that was an ideal counting by Mr. Pocket as always. The Ice Punch doesn't KO, but oh my. <laughs> he paused for the turn and then got the move. Uh, this Fire Punch is not going to do any damage. Here comes the Dawn Fan, because we have to bait it out. You can't have the Dawn Fan on the Magnezone. That's simply a GG. Uh, oh my, they were able to knock us out. And this thing does not have a move that hits for super effective on a neutral. They are all double resisted, whether it's a tail blaze or body slam. We're just going to go straight for the icy wind, hoping that they don't shield and let this thing go because we simply don't have an answer to this. Uh, do we need to shield? Yes, we need to shield. And they bring in the the uh, the down spots, and that was a good game. It's actually a tough matchup because they had two massive core breakers. Uh, Licky Licky. Uh, Licky Licky is extremely tough for this team because it beats every Pokemon except the Magnezone. So what do we do? We simply just go uh, drape on and throw these crunches. Uh, Crown Crunch doesn't care. We need to, but if you land the Crunch debuff, you can simply go straight Aqua Tail. Do we shield this? Pocket says no, we don't shield. They swap into Machamp. And now this is actually good for us because we can just do like some astonish nasty damage. They were at two, three, four, five, six. What? What was that? I thought maybe they oh, okay, they, they they simply just don't have rock slide. They have stone edge and they committed but they didn't get it. Uh, opponent swapped into carving. <laughs> oh my dude, we're going to see a, a sweep again by Magnus on Licky Licky throwing the body slam with shielding. We don't care. And this mid shot will take out the Licky Licky. And now it's Magnezone against the Carbon. And guys, mid shot does no damage. But in this matchup, you will see it doing so much damage. Look at that. Half of the Carbon HP going down to a mid shot. A move that literally does no damage. What do we do now? Well, we stay in and throw these mid shots. Because that Carbon is not going to have a break from these mid shots. A mid shot after a mid shot after a mid shot. And Pocket takes the win. 
moving to the next game, Azu. As I said, Azu's, uh, Azu is a code breaker to this team, but the thing about Azu, Azu is just a Pokemon that people know knows how know to how to handle because they've been playing against this Pokemon since season one, season one. And it's not that difficult. It's yes, it's a tanky, annoying Pokemon, but that's it. Pocket calls the player of bait. It was an ice beam. If it's a player of, it, it, we would have been like in a, a bit what situation, but it should be manageable. They have a Drapion. Again, Drapion is another tough Pokemon for this team. So what do we do? Pocket says, let's just swap to Magnezone. And no shield, a crunch, which does so much damage. And then farm all the way down. We can't farm all the way down. We have to shield. The question is, do we shield? Pocket says, yes, let's shield. Farm all the way down. And now they bring in Clothesire. This is annoying. This is tough. Mid shot number one. Mid shot number two. We actually do need the debuff. And then he aggressively swapped. We get the debuff. Upon to brought in as one. The funny part is that they, they transferred a... Uh, a astonish so the azu will die past it if they don't have a, uh, a stone edge we win this matchup so we're going to instantly throw the icy wind to debuff them as soon as possible and then going straight icy wind on good timing so here comes the moment of truth they don't have stone edge so this Drifloom will have a party and dunk on this uh cloth side stone edge number sorry uh icy wind number two shielded there is no way they win this because they are just simply walled by Drifloom, and this is the best thing that Drifloom can do which is destroying the cloth side so he was playing like some games on live stream because he was on queue time for like seven minutes to get one battle and literally like play other games he's playing whatever this game is i don't know the name for this one and Yes, he finally found a battle. And it's a... <laughs> imagine staying in a queue for 10 minutes to get a hard counter lead. How do we play this? Well, simply shield and icy wind debuff. Uh, eventually, you will swap out to the Drapion, but the Astonish will do so, so much damage. Like, look, they are already at half health. And now they are forced to swap out. And we actually don't mind this because we can just get to two crunches now as fast as, as we can. We get the crunch debuff as well, so we can just simply tap on the crunch. Do we need to shield this? I don't think we shield. No, we do shield. Pocket say, yes, let's shield this. We know something. He knows something right, that I don't. And we're just going to go straight. Crunch. Crunch number one. Number two landed, and here comes the chestnut. And we... Oh my, dude, he's getting... <laughs> dude, I did not anticipate the catch. We're catching a superpower on Drifblem. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Dude, that was a sick game. Like, okay. <laughs> Dude, th this game is just it's just a masterpiece. Like, like the read here, going for the, the actual massive read, that there is something in the back that hard countered the Magnezone. And going for the super powered catch. Oh my. I actually wouldn't shield here because I'm like, if I shield the Drapion, then the Magnezone is useless, right? But the question is, if we can flip this, the Magnezone won't be useless because the Magnezone can live a crunch and they can't simply poison this thing down. So look at this. One, two, three, four, five. Pause it. Look at this. He actually also paused the turn. Man, this this game this game this game is just incredibly in incredible. Look at that. See, he paused for the turn to make sure to tell the because the opponent was like trying to make sure that they throw the move on the Drapion. Catching the super power is huge because now Drifloom tank the move. That's like using another shield and have enough to draw an icy wind on the Drapion. And now our Drapion should sweep. I don't think we even need to reveal the Magnezone, but Pocket will try to play as safe as possible because he's trying to win uh, an almost impossible to win game. Uh, they brought the chestnut and now is he going to catch again? I have no idea, but all I know is that these poison stinks will add pretty fast they are throwing on cmp we win the cmp we win the game as well we'll play to mr pocket what a game uh good is a bit tough for the the Drifling because the dragon Blade does so much damage and they get to their charge move faster than us but the question is do we shield uh, bad aqua tails the answer is yes you have to shield winning the lead is kind of crucial for this team because you want to bait out the mud slapper and you can see that he's trying to bait out the mud slapper opponent doesn't have a mud slapper but they have a drapion uh, luckily we are on energy ahead and all we need to do is just throw these aqua tails uh, aqua tail number two opponent throwing their own aqua tail and now we can do two then throw uh, does this ko though i don't think it does but we have two of them no it does it does ko see guys uh, I don't think it does KO, but I think that Pocket has an attack weighted Drapion. That's what I would assume. 
uh, they have an Azu, and the Azu is, is a switch lock to our own uh, Magnezone. Do we shield this? Pocket is like, no, the reason we're using Magnezone, because we don't have to shield from Azu. Point strength to catch on Gudra, but I don't think we hit this. We don't mind throwing on CMP here. Uh, we're going to shield this, swap, and then Icy Wind. Uh, throwing the Icy Wind is, is good for us here because we want to just get rid of the Gudra because the bubble doesn't do that much damage and I'm assuming that it will be a simul KO but except that we get to the move right before that and we still have another move on the Magnezone so we comfortably, comfortably win this matchup. Moving into the next one, we have Dilflim into Quagsire. We saw Pocket last time shielding and calling baits so let's see this time. Is he going to call a bait or no? He's looking at the camera thinking, he's like, okay, let's shield. Uh, the reason the reason you shield here is that because you cannot afford losing a Drifflim, not because you have to call a bait. Losing a Drifflim is is going to cost you the game because we have two Pokémon's in the back that lose to that. So now he doesn't need to shield and he's going for the full farm down. We know that we live this with like two three HP, so it's not going to be the end of the world. Then we won the lead. Point brought in Mandy. We swapped out. They brought, they brought in Cloudside. This is what we want to see. We want to see the cloud side on the Drapion so the Magnezone can get to be on the Mandibuzz. Uh, Aqua Tail here is going to do some serious damage. And usually you KO with the three Aqua Tails. And they are throwing with shielding. The question is, is the opponent going to catch or no? That's the biggest question. The answer is no, they did not go for the catch. Which tells us that they are trying to uh, throw a charge move. But, but Pocket is like, no, let me snipe that thing with an Icy Wind. What do we do now? Well, number one, we go to the AP on and throw Aqua Tails. Number two, we go Magnezone and we throw a Wild Charge, which does insane amount of damage. But the question is, do we get to the, 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 the Wild Charge before them? The answer is yes, but Pocket lags. Oh, wait, they, they didn't lag. The opponent just left the game. I think the opponent left the game. Uh, now we have another Quagsire. Yeah, I thought it's lag. It turns out the opponent left the game because they, they don't get it. Pocket should get to the, the wild charge one turn before the second charge move from the Mandibuzz. So we shield it there. We go for, for the Icy Wind and this Icy Wind once landed, we can farm all the way down. Uh, do we shield here? No. No, we don't. We farm down. Yes, we go down a shield, but this is what we want to do. Uh, they have a Dugong. When you see the Dugong, you instantly go to Drapion. That's what Pocket have been doing so far. Uh, Crunch landed. No debuff, though. That's kind of annoying. Do we shield? I think last once he shielded, once he no-shielded. This time, he decided to no-shield. And now we have to wait for the switch clock because it's a bit desynced. So we can go back to go go to our Magnezone and fire them all the way down. And wait, what? Wait, what? Bro, I think he got robbed here. Because the 3 volt switches is literally similar to 4 icy ones. 3 multiplied by 4 turns, that's it 12. They have 3, three turns, they did 4 fast move, that's, that's it 12. So he can just CMP here. But look what happened. He came in late, because of that, the opponent was able to throw the charge move and not get punished. But it's not as bad, because now we can just double, double wild charge and then dip. But to be honest, this would have been like an extremely clean of a win. And now we landed the wild charge, all we need to do is just go to Drifflim, spam the Icy Wind, and even Niantic could not stop him, okay? Niantic tried to stop Pocket there, but they couldn't. This is an extremely annoying matchup. This is the ultimate core breaker. This is the nightmare for this team. So what's the plan here? The plan here is you shield. No, you no shield. You Icy Wind instantly, because if you do one, they will get to another one. That's how fast the Panda is to get to a charge move. I guess we throw the Aqua Tail immediately. They caught on Toxapex. Ah. I think he was hoping, like, catching uh, them, they throw a, uh, a close combat, and then he Aqua Tail, so shield, and get another shield easily. Uh, we landed the, the, the crunch, and I think there is a good play, which is farm all the way down with Magnezone, but I don't think Pocket likes to reveal his third. So that's, like, the main issue. Is he going to reveal the third and farm all the way down, or just go back? Uh, yeah, I mean, no. He would rather just win with this. And now we just go back to Drifflim. And force them to throw. They bring their own Drifflim. I think there is a chance in this game. Which is basically go Magnezone. Find them all the way down. Or just go to Drapion first. And now it's actually annoying. So what do we do? What we do is. We hopefully they no shield. They did no shield. And now they are in both switch range. Do we shield? Oh my. He's calling the base. Like no. No. This guy. This guy is going to bait. I'm going to call it. 
Uh, we need to get to two mid shots. And the thing is, he threw this because he wants to get a debuff. We need to get a debuff. We get the debuff. We survive because of the debuff. And that was actually the only way to win this game. Look at that. Look at that. Bro, this game is this game is amazing. Look at that. He queued into the ultimate core breaker for this team. And he went with two shields up. He didn't even use his shields. This game is insane. So yeah, thank you so much guys for watching these battles. And make sure to go and check Mr. Pocket on his live stream. And, and I will be leaving the description. Uh, I will be leaving. Holy man, I can't even speak. So thank you guys for watching this uh, these amazing battles. If you like the content, make sure to leave a like. And make sure to check the link down below in the description where I will be leaving Mr. Pocket's live stream. So you can go and follow him and learn from his tremendous plays. Appreciate it, my friend. And best of luck with climbing and hitting number one and winning as many regionals as, as you want. And that's it for today. I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.